Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. Just uh, this is a just a good time for us to really just dive into God's Word. Uh, we're in a series called Char- Characteristics of a Committed Christian. Uh, before I get going, I just want to celebrate just Sunday. We had a, a great service. Pastor Joe started a sermon series, uh, Fact, Fiction, or Fake News. We had a couple join uh, the Dorses. And I'd say in the past month, um, we've had uh, two or three people join, um, not including the the Morrises. So that's about five people. And so it's just a a great time, a great time to celebrate the successes that we're having as a church and how God is just moving in people's lives. Uh, If you haven't made it back uh, to to in-house service, uh, just be praying about when that time uh, will be. Uh, continue to watch on Facebook, but I tell you what, there, there's, there's nothing like being in service. It's, it's just something about that worship and something about just the fellowship of, of brothers and sisters. And so, uh, if you haven't made it back, I uh, just want to encourage you to pray about it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, give me a call here at the church and, and I'll, you know, answer the, any questions that you might have regarding what, uh, what we're doing regarding social distancing or, 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 or you know, any, any guidelines that we have regarding our, our Sunday service. So give me a call here at the church or email me and I'll be, uh, more than happy to visit with you and talk to you about that. Uh, and if you want to come up during the weekday and, and, and just see, you know, see with your, your own eyes. Uh, what's going on. Uh, you know, the church is open to you. And so I encourage you to do that. Uh, we're in a series. Uh, I'm in a series on Wednesday uh, about the characteristics of a committed Christian. And so I want to just review the characteristics, characteristics that we've gone over so far. And, and it's really, um, you know, we've done four. And so the committed Christian loves God right? Uh, a committed Christian stands on God's word. So we give an allegiance to God's word. Uh, we strive for Christian unity. We're not trying to, uh, you know, separate or break that, that Christian unity. We're trying to build each other up and disciple and mentor each other. Um, and then we have an attitude of faith. Um, and and the, today we're going to be talking about um, how, our, how our lives re- reflect who we are as Christians. And, and, and so we're going to be in first Peter. Uh, so go ahead and open your Bibles to first Peter chapter one, and we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 16. Uh, but before we get going, let's go ahead and, and pray. Father God, Father, we just, uh, we thank you, Father, for just your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I thank you that, uh, so many people were able to celebrate just Thanksgiving, Father, but not the the feast, Father, and not the the day, Father, but the Thanksgiving to you, Father, for for what you've done, Father, for us, Father, and that's uh, your Son Jesus Christ, Father. You loved us so much, Father, that you sent Jesus down to die for our sins, Father, so that for us to believe in you, Father, and have faith in you, Father, through your Son Jesus Christ, we'll have, we'll have an eternity with you, Father. And so I do give you thanksgiving, Father. Thank you so much for all that you've done, Father. Father, I pray for this time, Father. I pray that that you just uh, block out all the the, uh, distractions, Father, all the worries, Father. Father, let us just spend time at your feet. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, let's go to uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. And this is God's word. Uh, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of of Jesus Christ. As obedient Christians, do not be conformed to the former lust, which were yours in your ignorance, but alike the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves. Also, in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. We are commanded to be holy because the one who has saved us is holy. See, Peter here is talking about two types of holiness. The first is a result of the work of Jesus for us, right? That's at the moment of when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are then justified. Um, the second is the result of the work of the whole, what the Holy Spirit does in us. And, and that is a progressive, that's progressive. That's throughout our lives. We're 
we should be in a state of being sanctified. So we are justified at the moment of, of salvation. And then throughout our lives, we are then being sanctified. It's a current reality. If you're walking in Christ and, and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life, we are constantly being sanctified. You know, before I go any further, it's, you know, one of the dilemmas is, well, yeah, but what if my life, what if my current situation is just so bad that I just, I just don't see it. I don't feel it. What do you, what do I do? Well, that's when we really dive into God's word because God is moving in our lives. We might not see it or we might see it for something else, but know that God is moving in you. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit does. By us getting in the way or, 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 or contemplating or overthinking, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. And so when we are being sanctified, there are three, there are things that we have to do. And the first thing is we have to be in God's word. How can we get closer to God if we're not in God's word? How can we be closer to God if we don't spend time with God? Is all for, is, if all we are doing is second guessing God, then how are we getting closer to him? How can we see the blessings that God has given us if we're always second guessing and wondering what if and, and should I's? We got to focus on what God wants us to do, what his will is for our lives. See, this holiness, the holiness that the Holy Spirit moves in us and allows us to get closer. And it's clear that the holiness that Peter is speaking of here is the holiness that relates to our daily lives and, and our witness in Christ. Because as Christians, people are watching us, how we're going to react, how we act, how we make decisions, how we spend our time, how we spend our day, how we spend our conversations with people. Is Jesus being exhibited and, and being shown in our, in our thoughts, in our actions, in our decisions, in our interactions with people? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to... To, are we allowing that holiness through the Holy Spirit to, to move through us, to impact other people? See, through faith in Christ, we have been declared to be holy and therefore acceptable to God. Now, through yielding to the Holy Spirit's influence, we can display holiness in our daily lives. That is what Peter's talking about in this passage. See, a committed Christian strives for holy living. Holy living is something we must grow in. Holiness consists of that eternal change, that internal change, right? It's our wants, it's our wills that are brought into harmony to God. So our internal change, uh, the, the internal changes and impact our external changes. Our wants and our wills becomes our, become our desires externally. It's the desire to be in God's word. It's being in God's word. It's, it's discipling. It's mentoring. It's speaking truth into people. See, we must daily dedicate our attitude to God. Peter tells us in verse 13, prepare your minds for action. He tells us three things here. First is our thoughts are important. Second, our thinking needs to be changed. And third, these changes should be reflected in our actions. Paul tells us that the renewal of one's thinking is essential to growing towards holiness and that living in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. Ephesians 4 talks about this in verses 23 and 24. It says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. The objective of the committed Christian should be to understand things from God's perspective. But how do we do that? How do we see things through God's perspective? Well, we ask God to see, let us see things through his eyes. It's by daily yielding to the Holy Spirit. It's daily being in God's word. John 17, 17, and this is the New Living Translation, says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. A Christian can either live his life conformed to the world or be transformed by the word. Romans 12 says, do not allow this world to mold you in its own image. Instead, be transformed from the inside out by renewing your mind. 
The word Paul uses for transform means to change into another form. It's where we get, it's, it's from the Greek word metamorpho. It's, it's where we get metamorphosis, metamorphosis. It means to be transformed, to change, completely change like the butterfly. It, 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 it starts out as a caterpillar and becomes something totally different as a butterfly. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can't stay as who we were. He accepts us who we are, where we are, but he doesn't expect us to stay there. We are transformed. We, 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 we change into a new image created in him. So we go, essentially, we go from the caterpillar to the butterfly. Something that crawls to something that flies. It's, it, it changes every aspect of who we are in Christ. See, God wants us to undergo a complete metamorphosis. The tense here indicates it's a continuing process. So once we are transformed, we again, it's, it's being. It, it's that constant state of doing it, of being sanctified. Day after day, we are to be, to be experiencing continual change that brings us progressively into the likeness of Christ, getting closer to God. It's not becoming stagnant. It's not saying, okay, I accepted Christ. I'm good. It's I accepted Christ. How do I get closer to God? How can I know more about God? How can I share God? And we do that by getting closer to him. The life of a Christian is to be different. The one, and one of those differences is that our lives are to be marked by increasing obedience to the word of God. We must have a disciplined plan of daily taking in the scriptures, as well as a disciplined plan for applying them in our lives. It's one thing to read them, but then we have to read them and apply them. You know, we talk about that. It's talked about like that a lot in, in, in education, right? And even training in the in, in, in the business world, in any job or, or function that you do, it's one thing to read it, but it's another thing to apply it. You know, we were talking about this uh, the other night as a family. You know, we we're talking uh, to Jordan and Aiden. Sophia and I were talking to Jordan and Aiden about, you know, uh, the Jordan's finals that are coming up and Aiden's midterms that are coming up and and how some people have test anxiety and you know and they're asking well there's got to be other ways to 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 assess what we know and and I said yes it's application you know it's one thing to know it it's another thing to apply it so if you can teach it if you can talk about it if you can demonstrate it that's applying it in your lives well it's the same thing with God's word it's one thing to know it but it do, doesn't do any good unless you apply it. That's the difference between like agnostics and, 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 and those that know Christ. It's, it's knowing something, but then it's knowing it and then applying it in our lives. It's being active with that. It's the desire to be in God's word. Psalms 42 says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. See, we must daily dedicate our activities to God. Verse 13 says, keep sober in spirit. By daily spending time in God's word, the Holy Spirit will be able to lead a believer to live a life of self-control. Let me repeat that again. The Holy Spirit will be able to lead a believer to live a life of self-control. The more the Holy Spirit is in control of our lives, the more our self is under control. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As a result of having our minds renewed by the Holy Spirit through the word, through his word, the committed Christian thinks differently. As a result, we choose differently. Choices in life are important. There is a husband and a wife, and and prior to their marriage, uh, they you know they decided that um, he would make all the major decisions in their marriage, and she would make all the minor decisions in their marriage. And so, after twenty years of marriage, you know they were sitting at the you know at their anniversary anniversary party, and he and 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 he was asked, "Well, how's the arrangement working out of who makes decisions and wh who makes what decisions?" And his wife, you know, just put her her head in her hand and shook her head. And, and he was like, it's working out great. 
He said, in, in 20 years, I've never had to make a major decision. Well, who decides what's major and minor? See, the fact is that every decision we make is major. The average person makes 35,000 remotely conscious decisions. 35,000 decisions a day. I'm, for, for, I'm sure for women, that's the average. Um, the high end is probably women, men is probably a little bit lower, but it's 35 on average, 35,000 remotely conscious decisions. As, as you know, someone once said, life is determined not by chance, but by choice. In Hebrews 5, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews said this in verses 11 through 14. Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. See, how did the writer of Hebrews know that these believers were not growing in their knowledge and application of God's word? It was because of the decisions that they were making. See, immature thinking leads to immature decisions. Wrong thinking leads to wrong decisions. So my question to you is, what are your decisions saying about, saying about your dedication to God's word? Are you spending time in God's word? Are you applying God's word in your decision making? Is God even a factor in your decision making? We must daily dedicate ourselves to God. But, uh, Peter writes in verse 13, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Christ of Jesus Christ. Peter says that we need to set our day on pleasing God alone. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. The only measure of whether your life is, uh, our lives, it, it, lives is being lived in a worthwhile manner is what the Lord will say to us on, the, on his return. On that day, our lives will be evaluated in light of, of his holiness. Everything will be out on the table for us to, to, to talk about that we have to account for. First Corinthians 3 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved because, we, uh, and, and this is my my input, we can't lose our salvation, right? Once saved, always saved. So let me go back to it. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. See, if Jesus were to return today, how would you fare? Does your attitude reflect the character of Christ? Do the activities and choices you make in your life reflect the character of Christ? Is your desire to please God and God alone? 1 John 2, 28 says, And now, my children, live by the help of him. Then when he comes again, he will be glad to see you. When we, let me start over. And now, my children, live by the help of him. Then when he comes again, we will be glad to see him and not be ashamed. There's a lot of times in our lives where we're feeling like we're just at the end of our rope, that we can't go any further. But that's where God kicks in. He's right there to always walk with us, to be with us. Lo, I am with you, and I will never forsake you or leave you. 
I mean, that's God's word. That's God's promises that he will always be with us. And so when times are tough, when things are, or when they seem like they're at their end, don't give up your holy living. Don't give up being sanctified. That's when we apply God's word that we've stored up in our heart so that we continue to press on and do so with thanksgiving. That's like when Peter was in prison and they were beaten. They didn't go back and and, woe, and say, whoa, whoa is me. They pressed on and, and, and sang praises and psalms to, to God for allowing them to go through the, the struggles that they went through because they did so for the kingdom. They did so to, to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ to others. So I, could, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough to press on to continue to move forward, to continue to to be being sanctified in our daily walk, to be in God's word, and to hold on to those promises that we read about, but then to apply those promises that God has given us in our lives, because he is with you always, even until the end, he is always with you, even when you don't think he is, he is, amen, amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, Father, we do thank you for this just message, Father. For I myself, Father, feel that sometimes, Father, I just feel that I'm at the end of the rope, Father, that, Father, I'm at the bottom, Father, and that's where I find you, Father, just there with me, Father. Father, and I thank you, Father. I thank you for the promise of today, Father, that I could continue to share and be in your word so that I could share and, and pour it into somebody else, Father. Father, that, that we're in the constant state of being sanctified, Father. Father, I pray for those that are in, in that place of just being stagnant, Father, that are in the rut, Father. Father, I pray that you just help them see, Father, that they just need to spend more time with you, Father. That whatever happens in their life, Father, you are with them everywhere, Father, at all time, Father. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Um, don't forget, uh, our again, the sermon series that Pastor Joe's going over, uh, Fact Fiction or Fake News. Uh, he'll continue it this Sunday. We have two services, uh, 9 o'clock at Magnolia, 1045 at Spring. Uh, it, it'll be great to see you at, at either uh, locations at, uh, for the live service. If you're joining us on Facebook, please be sure to put in the comment section uh, that you're joining us uh, so that we could just uh, interact with you. Just pr And if there, you have any prayer requests, you can put that there as well. Or go to our website, go to our guest tab. There's a, sh um, a short survey that you can use as a prayer request as well. As well. Or just email our prayer line, call our church. Uh, you can find all that information on our website, our Facebook page, or give us a call here at the church at uh, 281-350-9673, or you can email me personally at pastorgary at bfchurch.com. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if there's any way that I can encourage you, just, um, you know, if nothing else, we could just be in God's word together. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless.